Good morning, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for bringing the church today on Mother's Day. I would like to wish all of the mothers a happy Mother's Day, and I hope everybody has a great day today. Um, can you please come in and find your seats? Stand with me as we start today's worship service with Blessed Be Your Name. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. My name's Katrina. I'm one of the many uh, volunteers here at Hillsborough Baptist Church. And there's just a few announcements this morning. Just want to say hi to those at the Tide and watching online as well. Uh, there are some connection cards in the front pocket of the seat in front of you. If you're new here, we like to have uh, you fill one of those out and you can place them in the offering plate or at the back of the wall there are boxes. Also, if you have a prayer request, those can go also in the offering plate and at the boxes at the back. There is also a photo booth out in the foyer for mothers and their children or for your families after church if you want to stop by. Uh, we're just going to take your email address. Once we have the pictures done, we'll email those to you. 
As well, Monday, uh, June 3rd at 7 p.m. will be our spring business meeting. And any board or committee chairs that would like to place something on the agenda, please let Greg Weir know or the office. And does anyone know what next Sunday is? And what are we calling it? Story celebration. So next week, uh, Pastor Jeff will be speaking on the last chapter, chapter 31, and uh, it's called The End of Time. We'll be having Bring Your Best Forward. So whatever potluck item you would like to bring, make sure there's a story because you never know if we might ask what the story is behind it. There will be testimonies, there will be drama, the potluck, there will be games, there will be a photo booth, there will be special guests. Oh, speaking of special guests, here comes one now. What are you doing here? You're like a week early. Same thing, no womb in the inn. <laughs> so we rode right on through, got here today. Well, it looks like you have traveled a long way and you didn't come all this way in your condition alone, did you? Oh, of course not. My husband's out parking the donkey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're the first to arrive. Our other guests won't be here till next Sunday, but make yourself at home and be sure to fill out a connection card. Well, thank you for, the, for welcoming me. We'll be sure to come back next Sunday. Speaking of my husband, here he comes there. <laughs> oh, we better go. Can't park in the fire lane. Okay, we'll see you next week then. If you guys would like to meet more of our special guests next week, come on out. And uh, I would uh, like for you to stand and just greet one another. everybody, I would ask you to return to your seats, please, and we'll continue on with the service today. 
I just want to say a quick prayer over the service. Father God, thank you for today. Um, I just pray that you'll bless everybody in this church today. Thank you for this place where we can all meet on a weekly basis so freely. Um, we welcome you here. Soften our hearts and touch our hearts, Father God. In your precious name I pray, amen. Stand with me, please.
slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Right. 
You may be seated. Do we have somebody dismissing the children this morning? Am I going to have to do it? Um, Offering, sorry. Okay, we're done. Surprise, the person that's supposed to do it is tied up outside right now, so not literally, but he's outside. Um, there's many ways of giving, as you can see on the screen. I, uh, I like the envelope myself. It works great for me because it was, uh, as I turn 66, my memory starts to fade, so uh, it's nice to see when I actually do it. So uh, it's an opportunity now for you to give back to the Lord, for his work to continue, and uh, for it to grow and to be... Uh, an everlasting effect in this area. So we're going to pray at this time and thank for the offering. Lord, we do thank you again for this day and for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to share our, uh, what we have back to you. And we do thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us each day. And Lord, again, be with those that give and be with uh, those that receive. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to introduce Michaela LeBlanc. If you remember, is it a year ago you were baptized? A year ago, and she's growing in the Lord each day. Today is her birthday. She's 13 today, and she wants, she's been working on this song a long time. It's not an easy one. We have a couple of requests for you. I need you all to smile at her. Because you're a motley crew sometimes with your straight faces. <laughs> the other thing is that I'm going to stand with her because she just has asked me to hold her hand while she sings. And I'll do anything to get these girls up here to sing. So we're going to, I'll just forget I'm here, but I'm here. a quiet place that gives me peace when I'm alone with you there's a hiding place your spirit's always there when I'm confused mm. only you can purify all this world won't ever satisfy my heart it cries as a deer pants for the water so my soul needs you Lord when thirsty God your Fill us up again with your 
Jones and I help out with the Junior Helper Program and this is I'm Jillian Melanson I'm the Director of Discipleship here at HBC you move your head <laughs> well I want to say welcome to all the families and all of the visitors and of course a special welcome to all the mothers out there happy Mother's Day <clears throat> All right, families, just to let you know that Hills Kids is an opportunity for our kids to love, connect, and serve, just like we do here on Sunday and throughout the week. Um, it's from ages three to grade five. Before we dismiss the kids out today, though, we would like to celebrate with all the moms. So we encourage anyone who has been a mother, is a mother, or is going to be a mother to stand up for a moment. The kids would love to bless you with a gift of a flower.
We also want to encourage anyone who has been a foster mom, an adopted mom, a mentor to a young child, or a, or a, a spiritual guidance to a young child to stand as well. You're mothers, and we appreciate you as, also. To the women who are single and long to be married and mother of their own, we pray for you and we want to celebrate you also. Please stand. To those of you who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, thank you, we anticipate with you and we celebrate you as well. Please stand with us. To those of you who gave birth this past year to your first child, we congratulate you and want to celebrate you as well. Please stand with us. To those who are in the trenches with the little ones every day and wear that badge of food stains, have lived through driving tests, medical tests, and overall testing of motherhood, we appreciate you, are better for you, and encourage you to stand with us today. To those who have experienced loss through infertility, miscarriage, failed adoption, or children who have run away. We mourn with you. We also celebrate you and encourage you to stand with us today. Again, to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you and we want to celebrate with you today. Please stand. And of course, to those who lost their mother this year, we grieve with you and want to celebrate you and their life. Please stand with us today. To those who are step parents, we walk with you on this path and we celebrate you. Please stand with us today. To the empty nesters, we celebrate you with you as well. Please stand with us today. And to those who have spread their love over the years to their grandchildren, we, we want to celebrate you. Please stand with us today. All right. We want to make sure that all of our kids have said thank you to these moms in our lives. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's wonderful to see them show their love and their attention. And I really wanted to bring note to Michaela. Amazing, fabulous. Again, one of our children in our, in our choir, in our church. All right, guys, come on over as we pray. Come on over. Come on over. All right. So big thing we're going to be thankful for today is our moms, right? and our Grammys and every, all the other cool ladies that are in our lives. All right, let's all bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for these little ones. Thank you for the church that allows us to be able to be here. I thank you for our moms who support us and who care for us and our grandparents who love us and support and care for us. Dear Jesus, for any mom out there, we ask in your holy name, amen. Let's go. As many of you as teachers know, it's a privilege to have um, your students um, perform for you or come back into your life and, and share their giftings. So I'm going to introduce uh, Michaela and Luke Tominga from Brantford, Ontario. Their mom and dad are also with us this weekend, Grace, Tominga, and Tony. And um, Luke started singing with me as his teacher when he was the size of Declan. And Michaela wasn't very much older, probably maybe eight. And their mom and dad are extremely musical, and you are just going to be blessed. Your socks are going to be blessed today with these two, and it's just a privilege to have you with us. Welcome.
Thank you, Michaela and Luke. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father, as we bow our heads, we bow our hearts before you this morning, we thank you that you hold us fast and that you're what we need. And we just come and bring our cares to you, cast all our care upon you because you care for us. We worship you this morning. Thank you, God, for who you are and your great love and mercy and grace to us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for mothers today. Lord, you've blessed us so much in creating us and giving us life and giving us homes and families. Lord, we pray particularly for those who do not have these blessings. Lord, for your touch and help us who are blessed to share these blessings with others. Lord, today I come to you and lift up uh, your church here. Pray for Pastor Jeff and uh, the staff and Lord, for um, all of those. We pray for the tide and for uh, Pastor Paul. We just commit uh, this ministry to you today. We pray for your special blessing. And Heavenly Father, we lift up those who are in need today, those who need a fresh touch from you, a healing touch, and those, our Father, who need you to come alongside them in a time of great need. Lord, today we just come before you and pray that you will minister to us through your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have inspired your word and that you also come alongside us by the power of your Holy Spirit to make your word live in our experience. May we go from this place this morning, not just hearers of the word, but doers as well. May we go from here with our hearts filled with praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Now may your spirit come among us in a special way and minister to us, we pray, through your word, in Jesus' name we ask it. And God's people said, amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. For those that don't know me, I'm uh, John Weiler. I've uh, been a pastor forever. And uh, I am uh, your pastor's wife's father. And uh, it's uh, great to be here. And uh, I, I haven't got my daughter's permission, but I'm going to step out as a father. Please pray for her tomorrow. She has surgery tomorrow. And so I'd like you to pray for her. I know we're in prayer for her, so I hope she gets a lot of tweets out of that. But please pray for her. Tomorrow she has surgery. Um, They have just returned from a tremendous trip to the Netherlands uh, during tulip time, and we've got all kinds of pictures, as probably you have seen on Facebook, uh, her pictures of tulips, and uh, she's had... uh, Just a great time there in the Netherlands for the last three weeks. I want to say hi to the tide, just in case I haven't, and Paul down there, uh, and uh, it's great to have uh, you folks along. And so this morning, we're taking a look at the the second last chapter in this book, The Story. How many of you had a chance to read this book? How many? There's quite a few around. God bless you for following through on this. 
And some of you, I think, have been in Bible studies uh, and have been in small groups and with this book. How many have done that? I want to say congratulations. Um, and you have seen now a picture of the whole Bible. And I think it's just a tremendous uh, resource. Um, I know the church where I'm a member, we went through the story a year ago and just had a real blessed time uh, going through that uh, resource. Well, Jeff gave to me um, a tremendous assignment, very difficult assignment, uh, preaching um, Paul's last days on Mother's Day. Can you imagine that? I think he's getting back at me somehow for being his father-in-law. Dear, oh dear, what a way to get back at me. So we're looking at Paul's last days, and I've called it the legacy, the legacy. As we look at that, we want to look at Paul's last letter that he wrote in prison while he was in Rome in prison, 2 Timothy. So if you have your Bible, you might want to follow on this morning in 2 Timothy. The scriptures are going to be up in the up on the screen and uh, so but you can follow on your scripture. I'm using the New International Version. Somebody asked me um, why do you use that translation? Well, Many of the translators of the NIV I studied under. <laughs> so I'm real old guy because the NIV has been around for a long time. So when you study under professors, you, you get to respect them and their scholarship. So that's why I always use the NIV. Um, so, uh, and I understand um, someone that I've called my professor, but actually was a student who studied with me is here this morning, and that just shows my age. That's John Meenick. He and I went to Bible college together, so I, I'm real old, right? <laughs> and uh, so, but next week, you're going to get the young guy. He's coming back, and uh, I know you'll be glad to see him back. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a look at 2 Timothy. It's the last epistle or letter that uh, the apostle wrote, um, and he composed it while he was a prisoner in Rome. Did you know that the lives of the apostle Paul and uh, Emperor Nero uh, kind of overlap? For about four years, Nero was the emperor in Rome while Paul was in prison. Nero's name was making the headlines, but Paul wasn't. Nero was considered a hero. Paul was zero. Paul kept talking about Jesus as if he were God, and so it landed him in prison. If you asked anybody in Rome in the seventh decade who was going to make the most impact and, and have the greatest legacy, everybody would have said Nero and not Paul. However, the, we know because of what has happened over the years, the opposite is true. What kind of a legacy did these men leave? First of all, uh, Nero. Legend has it that Nero fiddled while Rome burned. At 29, Nero was lonely and paranoid. Nero committed suicide four years after the death of Paul. His life is not held up as an example, even as a good leader. His first, his second wife, killed his first wife, and, and Nero kicked his second wife while she was pregnant, and she died. What a legacy. What a legacy is that. How awful. On the other hand, the Apostle Paul 
started out persecuting Christians, and then he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, and it changed his life. It changed the whole direction of his life. The Bible tells us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. When a person knows Jesus in their life, it changes their life completely. And that happened to the Apostle Paul. The book of Acts tells the story of Paul's journey, how he started and he organized churches throughout the then known world. He wrote most of the New Testament, 13 letters. His teachings still impact us today. What a legacy. Paul died, as I mentioned, in his late 60s in Rome as a martyr for his faith. Listen to what Paul said was his legacy. And Michael Kay is going to read that for us this morning. Uh, Katrina is going to find him, and he's going to read, and you follow on there as, as he reads 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8. For I'm already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I want you to notice, and if you have a Bible, underline in these words, Paul's testimony, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. What a legacy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. People do not call their sons Nero. They call their dog Nero. Why they would, I wouldn't know. But uh, many have called their sons and daughters Paul or Pauline. Why? Because of the impact that this man has made right across the world. Who are the real difference makers today? Who are the real difference makers? Not those who make the headlines. Not the celebrities. But ordinary people like you, like me. Mothers who are in obscurity they're the ones that leave a legacy that is powerful and lasting, just like the Apostle Paul. I believe with all my heart that everyone here this morning can leave a legacy that honors and glorifies God. Each of us can have an impact by following the example of the Apostle Paul. First of all, fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. We need people who will fight the good fight. Paul tells of his tumultuous life in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 29. And Brenda Hawks is going to read that for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 29. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. 
I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin, and I, and I do not inwardly burn? Paul's testimony that uh, really hit me when he said, uh, I have, uh, uh, besides everything else, he said, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. I didn't realize what that meant until I became a regional minister and uh, had the concern of Eastern uh, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island churches. Paul led quite a life, didn't he? Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, boy, that sure is not me. Uh, I, I sure haven't had what, what Paul had. Maybe you're not under threat of imprisonment, but maybe you're under threat of rejection or isolation or your family thinks you're going off the deep end. That may be you today. Or... You're not going through a storm on the Mediterranean Sea, but you're facing some personal storms in your life. Financial storms, marital storms. Christ followers face challenges. Friends, we all have challenges in our life, every one of us. I could go around and interview each of us, and you could tell of the storms in your life. I could mention the storms that I've gone through in my life. We've all gone through storms. In the midst of it all, we are all fighting battles. The Apostle Paul tells us how he gained strength to go through all of these struggles. And I think we can learn from him. Gary Stevens is going to read 2 Timothy 1, verses 8 to 12. So, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I've entrusted to him until that day. Two things I, I noted, thanks, by the way, thanks for all these who are reading, and, and thanks to Katrina for getting these um, people to read for me. I really appreciate it. I noticed two things. One, Paul anchored his life to a hope out of this world. He anchored his life to Jesus out of this world. Friends, I want to encourage all of us, especially mothers, anchor your life in Jesus. Anchor your life in Jesus. My hope is found in nothing less than Jesus, than him, his love and righteousness. I anchor my life in Jesus. And secondly, Paul entrusted his life into the hands of God. He entrusted his life to God's hand. He said, I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I've entrusted to him until that day. Remember, he wrote these words from prison. He entrusted his life into the hands of God. No matter what you're facing today, no matter what your life is, put your hands into the hand of the master who calms the sea. Put your life in his hands. You can leave a legacy that glorifies God. 
a legacy that lasts. Fight the good fight. All of us are in a battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but a principalities and powers and the rulers of this dark world, Paul says in Ephesians. I've been a pastor for a long time, and uh, in my very first church that I started in the uh, mid-70s that I was started pastoring, several years later, I came across one of the ladies that uh, was in the church, and I asked her a question. I said, uh, do you remember anything that I said? (laughs) And she looked at me and she said, "Uh, Pastor, (laughs) I don't remember very much that you said at all. I spent all those times on those sermons and she didn't remember. Lesson that I learned, people don't always remember what you say, but they remember your life. They remember your example. They remember your attitude. But she said, I remember one thing you said, Pastor. You said people will let you down. God will never let you down. Friends, God will never let you down. Place your life in his hands as you fight whatever fight God has given to you. You can leave a legacy by fighting the good fight and finishing the race. Finishing the race. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. You know, Paul must have been a sports fan. Don't you think so? I mean, he talks about wrestling (laughs) or, or boxing, and here he is talking about a race. Uh, a passage that he wrote is 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, and Sarah Johnson is going to read that. Notice the reference to the race. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. I like asking people the question, are you winning? Are you winning? Are you running to win? Paul says, run to win. Run to win. Finish the race. I've been a pastor for um, over 45 years. Uh, They, at the Oasis, they have uh, uh, a recognition of of those who've been ordained 45, 50 years. And uh, I got a notice this week in the paper there uh, in the mail to come for that. I've been ordained over 45 years. That's why I got gray hair. <laughs> and uh, you're going to have somebody, but he is getting gray hair. Jeff is getting gray hair. Notice it next week. <laughs> so um, catches up to you. <laughs> if you're going to win this race, there are four demands. Now, there's a debate, is this a a marathon race or is this a 200-meter race? Uh, uh, Some of the commentaries I read said it's a 200-meter race. When we look at the grand scheme of things, life is very short. Sometimes we think it's a marathon. The older you get, the shorter you think it is. It goes by like this. So how can, what can we do to win? Well, first of all, it takes some drive. You've got to have drive. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins. Run to win. If you're going to run the 200-meter race, you better get out of the blocks fast. It's not quite as fast as 100, but you better run fast. 
Friends, life ends soon. The Bible tells us never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Romans 12, verse 11. Secondly, it takes devotion. You have to be devoted, devoted to win. They gave out these wild olive uh, crowns. I saw uh, the crown at the Boston Marathon. Somebody had it on who won the race, but it was, it was a, a gold and it was metal. But, but they had that, that, they ran for that. There was devotion toward that. We're watching now four teams who are devoted to win the Stanley Cup. Friends, are you devoted to win Jesus saying to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Here's the crown of righteousness for you. It takes drive, devotion. It takes discipline. All athletes train hard. And in the pre-Olympic time, they had to sign a contract saying they will take they will do the, the following exercises. They will, they will run this far. They will uh, get in shape. They will, they will eat the following foods. They had to do that for the Greek and the Isthmian games. They had to be disciplined. Friends, if we're going to finish, we better be disciplined. We better be into the word of God every day. We better be praying. We better be worshiping the Lord. Oh, friends, finish the race. I thank God for a mother who finished the race. My dad died when I was 14. I was raised by a single mom. We're on welfare. But I watched my mom come to church And she would put in some money every time. And we didn't have it. Why? She was disciplined. It takes determination. I love these verses. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. What a great translation. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and missing out myself. I'm preaching a bit, aren't I? Sorry, mothers. Uh, You're the best example of this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Keep the faith. You want to set, uh, give a legacy, people remember, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Paul kept the faith, but he also praised others who kept the faith. Tyler's going to read for us 2 Timothy 1, verses 3 through 5. Notice the reference to a mother and a grandmother. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Here, Paul is commending the faith of a grandmother and a mother. What kind of faith is worth commending, worth getting excited about, worth keeping? What kind of faith? First of all, a faith that is sincere, that is real, that is real. I am reminded of your sincere or your real faith. What is faith? I love the acrostic of faith, F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, I trust him. That's what faith is. Forsaking all, I trust him. When it comes to salvation, I don't trust my church attendance. I don't trust my good works. 
I trust Jesus. He's the one who died for me. That's what faith is, forsaking all. I trust him. My faith is in Jesus Christ and what he did for me on the cross. Amen? That's sincere faith. I love the Living Bible translation of Hebrew 11.1. 1. What is faith? It is confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it ahead. Secondly, faith that is alive and living, that's worth commending. Notice it lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. Every day I get up and you can ask my wife, I go and sit in the chair and I, I, I read the Bible. I've been reading the Bible through in different translations and I do a devotional every year. This year I got a great devotional called Good Morning Lord, Can We Talk by Charles Swindoll. And on the 2nd of, 22nd of April, he writes this about walking by faith. In our hyper-efficient GPS-guided culture, walking by faith is often considered weird, reckless, and irresponsible. Yet that's what this prospect called the Christian life is all about, isn't it? We walk by faith, not by sight. We rely on what we are not able to see rather than what we can see. God asks us to step out and trust without knowing how everything will unfold. Abraham and Paul did it. Peter did that on the stormy sea of Galilee. Stepped out in faith believing. You never know what your witness will do until you step out in faith and talk to somebody about Jesus. You never know what will happen when you say, hey, yes, Lord, I hear the call. I'm going to Bible college. I'm going to seminary. You never know what will happen. That takes faith. I did it when I was young, stepped out, and I went to, to uh, school with guys that did it like John. We stepped out in faith. That's what it's all about. Friends, I want to encourage you today, step out in faith. You'll be amazed what God does. He's waiting for you and me to step out in faith. Faith that is sincere, faith that is alive and living, but faith that is passed on by teaching. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, listen as I read it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and what you have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Mothers, I want to encourage you, you who have taught your children. From infancy, Timothy learned the scriptures from his grandmother and his mother. Many of us have learned that way, how blessed we are to learn, to pass on. You need to teach the Bible personally. You know those from whom you learned it, mothers taught it personally. They've got to teach it. They've got to live it. Second, teach the word practically. From infancy, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Parents, moms have the best chance to teach their children. I've been watching our uh, granddaughter um, raise two little boys and how she teaches the scripture to them. I watch my wife, always she gives a Bible. 
a Bible they can read, a Bible for the children. Oh, friends, let's not give up on that. We need to communicate the word of God. Teach the Bible purposefully. Verse 15 says, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the goal, that they may come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. There is no greater joy for a mother than to lead their children to faith in Jesus Christ. Did you have that joy? Did you have that influence? I hope you did. What a way to pass on a legacy. Maybe you're laboring away in relative anonymity doing your thing for the glory of God. You're loving your kids, showing up at work, hanging in there with a grumpy spouse, taking it a day at a time. God bless you, Mom. God bless you. Life comes with challenges. Life comes with storms. But remember, you're a living epistle read by your children the most. Do not underestimate how God is going to use your life. Don't be discouraged. Don't be downhearted. Thank you to all who have left and are leaving a God-honoring legacy. Amen. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Don't leave it half done. Finish the race. Keep the faith. And leave a God-honoring legacy. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with your word and the great example of the Apostle Paul who even when he was in prison facing martyrdom, He kept the faith. He finished the race. He fought the good fight. May that be the legacy of every one of us here this morning. I pray especially for somebody who's really struggling through a storm. Lord, draw yourself close to that person. May they find help today. We pray in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you for your message, John. Will you stand with me once more today, please?
Friends, I always like to close off a service with if there's anyone who would like to me to pray with them, or maybe there's somebody around you you want to pray with, you want to do that. If you're going through a storm in your life, bring it to the one who's able to calm the storm. And so I invite you to do that. I'm going to pronounce the benediction. God bless you. Have a great Mother's Day. And if you have a need, I'd like to pray with you or somebody here who'd like to pray with you. Let's pray together. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, world without end. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.